When it comes to making modifications to late model cars equipped with automatic transmissions with electronic controls, this can be a little bit tricky. In most instances we might be limited to reflashing the factory transmission control module and this can be effective to a point but it can also give us some pretty big limitations. We're here with Nick from Motec USA to find out a little bit more about Motec's take on a standalone and integrated electronic transmission control module. So Nick, for a start, Let's just talk about the limitations with a factory transmission control module and how we can go about making tuning changes to those. Obviously it can have a big effect on the shift pattern and this becomes more and more important as well uh, when we start modifying a factory engine and significantly increasing the power and torque it produces. So where are those limitations with factory software? Well yeah, so you don't have the ability to take full control of all the tables, all the ignition timing, all the fuel. If you want to replace injectors, now you got to change your fuel injector characterization where that's where the standalone comes in is you can't change everything about what you're putting in the project. All these different add-ons, you're going to bolt on a different supercharger. You, you can't account for that in the factory ECU reflash without a lot of background work behind it. I think it's important to mention here with reflashing, it's a technology where we are modifying the calibration essentially, the calibration data that the same way that the factory technicians do so. And it can be immensely powerful, but the limiting factor as well can be the tables or maps that have been uh, properly defined. So basically what we have access to. And sometimes if the tables that we need to access aren't there, we've obviously got no way of making adjustments to them. And now in terms of your your support here, you're, you've produced a plug and play kit that's currently in development for the late model Ford Mustang. Uh, so can you talk to us about what you've done there, how, how the system works? Yeah, so we've gone in and actually reversed out that the fact that you need to have good pressure control, current control to actually do it on the back end of all the different solenoids interacting between each other along with the torque management of the engine controller itself. So we can actually go in, phase in the different phases of, um, you know, preparation, torque transfer, and release in the next gear with ramp rates of pressure control of the solenoids. So with that, you can fine tune it. So if you add on more horsepower, you can change how fast or how much pressure you will apply to these different solenoids. All right, so there's a couple of aspects there I just want to dig into in a little bit more detail. So first of all, if we've got a, a standard engine that's just been tuned, so we're not taking a, maybe a naturally aspirated engine and adding a supercharger or turbos, so let's just consider the stock engine. So understandably with a stock engine we should expect the factory transmission mapping to work, but there still can be advantages in changing shift pressure, shift times, basically sacrificing a little bit of comfort in terms of a more aggressive shift that will make the car more responsive and faster, is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. We also can actually change different shift patterns. So we've actually been able to add in a shift pattern, say, three to six, that you can't achieve with the factory controller because it's not something they would normally do, where they take these transmissions, remove out some of the gears to make it more robust, stronger gears, and a need to do a three to six shift. We can do that now because we have a standalone control of the strategy. Now the other aspect is that there is a really strong requirement for interaction between the engine controller and the transmission controller in regards of when a shift is being processed the engine control module needs to reduce the engine torque so that the transmission isn't damaged. So. You've mentioned here that if you're making massive, diff mass massive increases to power and torque, maybe adding the supercharger and turbocharger or that sort of combination, this can be problematic. So how does this affect, why doesn't this work well with the factory transmission control module? Well you need to be able to control that now you need to bring in pressure sooner or later and the amount of pressure but also the fact that you can control the torque reduction. So you do it like you would on a normal sequential, you need to remove torque at a certain amount of time but also properly time that in with the uh, pressure release or pressure gain from the solenoids. So you can have that fine control for up and downshift tuning. In a factory system, completely stock standard, how is that torque reduction achieved by the engine controller? Um, they do anything from throttle management to ignition timing management and then ignition cuts as well. But again, when the torque that the engine is producing may be double or maybe even three times what the factory engine was ever supposed to produce, sometimes these factory uh, techniques or strategies for the torque reduction can not reduce the torque enough. Is that a reasonable way of putting it? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, like sometimes they don't even do cuts. You have emissions things they're trying to keep into track where we don't care about that when we're doing road racing. So we actually do stronger cuts so we can do reduce it quicker and get a harsher shift. We're not worried about emissions as well, so we can just slide right through as well. The other aspect here is that's uh, talking about an upshift. The downshift is just import as important in terms of uh, rev matching. So how is that achieved? Um, you do the blips like you would normally do for some sort of race style um, shifting, but you can also manage the over blip or under blip a little bit with our you know, closed loop RPM matching and all that kind of stuff. Now, if someone's looking for an engine swap and looking to put one of these transmissions into uh, behind another engine in a, a complete swapped out car, uh, is it possible to use the MoTeC controller as a standalone or is this only integrated with the engine controller as well? Yeah, so we've developed a standalone system, um, very near, nearly completion with the actual full solution, where all we need is some sort of torque understanding from the engine controller, or and then ability to possibly provide that we want to cut from them as well, and you can integrate our standalone transmission controller into some other situation that doesn't use our ECU as well. Now, with the modern crop of electronically controlled automatics being quite complex, and, and this is obviously something that from an engine tuner's perspective they don't necessarily have that understanding of tuning an automatic transmission, I'm going to guess if you get all of this wrong you could turn it into a very expensive basket case? Yeah, I mean imagine you could, but we've also worked on some developing of you know, catching it if you've started to do a chatter or um, adding it in if you slipped into the wrong gear. So there are some safeties we've tried to develop into there to keep you so to go into a neutral situation instead of completely locking up the transmission. But it is something you need to be careful of. It's um, when you are controlling the situation, you're contro taking control of all the solenoids. There is possibilities of being able to do something that we haven't predicted out of the situation. So what's the sort of learning curve for a tuna brand new into automatic transmission tuning, how would you suggest they sort of go about modifying your base calibration, which obviously should be uh, safe and, and pretty effective for a stock engine, uh, when they're maybe adding uh, a supercharger and doubling the engine torque, uh, what sort of changes are kind of necessary in the transmission programming? Um, it's going to really depend on where they go with it and the, honestly the chassis that it's all going into, how harsh is everything. So we're always there for development side of things, and so people can reach out to us with specific requests. We can look at data for them and uh, you know, recommend changes that we would apply to everything. Now, these plug-and-play kits are still, as I understand, in development. When are they going to be available for public release? So we're looking for a public release of the um, full Mustang kit with automatic transmission um, in late Q1 and then um, possibly the uh, standalone transmission one, uh, if not a little bit before or a little bit after that. And if people want to find out more about these products, where can they go to? I'm at Motec.com or uh, millspecwiring.com, and it's where they post up all the information on them. Perfect. Thanks for the chat there, Nick. Nope, no problem. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.